action. <laughs> well, welcome staff members and it's my uh, privilege to go through the staff policies for our coming summer ministry and uh, some of these may be obvious and others are very uh, specific to our program here, but uh, they are somewhat alf alphabetical. And the first three have, first three have to do with a uh, attitudes. And uh, I always like to say you apparently have exhibited these already in your interview or uh, you wouldn't be watching this video. But uh, those three are a vivid concern for pleasing Christ in your life. A realization that camp here is for the campers and overall everything we do a servant type attitude and so if we remember that throughout the summer and everything we do uh, the rest of these uh, will be real easy and our ministry will be great uh, the first one has to do with cars uh, you're, you, you, you are to use your cars only during days off and hours off um, most importantly please drive slowly and carefully on camp uh, if you think you are driving slow enough, uh, drive even slower. That's a good rule. Uh, we have speed bumps as you come up the driveway. Those are a reminder to do that. Please lock your cars and park in the designated area, which for us as staff are up behind the boys' dorm. And then uh, on the weekends when you return or if you're here during the weekend and you're parked for the weekend uh, in the lower parking lot, you need to move your cars before our Sunday evening meeting uh, and uh, to the upper parking lot. If you're here without a vehicle, you can carpool with other staff members uh, for church or for your hours off or for runs to the store and uh, coordinate that maybe with somebody obviously who has a vehicle, but also keep in mind that uh, with gas, gas prices the way they are, it uh, would be a kind thing to ass assist with the price of a few dollars worth of gas. Uh, Josh and I have golf carts. They are kind of our primary work vehicles and, and uh, those are uh, for us only. There will be times where um, we will suggest that you uh, use a golf cart or maybe it would make your job easier as a program position. Uh, please do ask and we'll see if we can accommodate. Cell phones. Uh, all summer staff cell phones should be turned into your mailbox uh, by 7 o'clock on Monday morning and we'll be gathering outside the office there. Actually, we'll, and so make sure they're in your, in your mailbox by then. Um, and then uh, you can use them during your hour off, but otherwise they need to remain in the office until Saturday morning when we dismiss you. Um, please don't uh, sneak into the office just to catch an update on your phone throughout the week, uh, unless it's your hour off. Dress code for our staff. Um, our staff members are to dress in harmony with the standards for the campers. And if I had to say one word, it would be modesty. Um, we want to set the example. Um, all of our undergarments should be covered. Uh, an, an important one is wearing footwear at all times on the camp. Whether that's flip-flops, chacos, tennis shoes, whatever it is. Uh, barefoot is only in the swimming pool, the shower, and the slip and slide. Seems like there's one more, but I can't remember the other S. Um, when you're working in the dining hall, closed-toed shoes are required by the health department. So if you are on high school staff or volunteering in the kitchen, whatever, if you're working there, a health department requires closed-toed shoes. Um, guys, your hair needs to be collar length or shorter, and the hairstyle should not draw attention to ourselves. Um, natural hair colors only, and no facial piercings. Um, and girls, no facial piercings. Please wear sleeveless tops that cover your straps. Uh, wider strap tanks may be worn, um, not spaghetti straps. Shoes, excuse me, shirts, skirts and shorts need to be modest and cover appropriately. And then uh, with regard to swimsuits, one piece swimsuits, uh, the same as with that we ask our campers. During the meal times, um, no swimsuits at the dining hall and guys with no sleeveless shirts, please. Also, you will have occasion to wear, especially junior campers will want to remain in their swimming suit uh, to run to the mealtime. Please uh, have them change before they come. That's an unhealthy uh, issue there. 
Uh, lifeguards, when you're at the pool, should be in your swimsuit and ready to respond. Um, if it is cool out, you can wear a sweatsuit over that, but something that uh, shoes and sweatsuits that could be easily removed uh, in, in need of uh, your assistance. Electronic entertainment. Campers and staff are not allowed to use electronic devices during the camp week except during your week off. Um, and media devices, wireless internet, we do have wireless internet uh, in the lodge and the dining hall. We point those out because we want you on your time off if you are utilizing your device or your cell phone, please do it out of sight of the campers. Um, each night at evening chapel, uh, all attendance is required for everyone. There will be times maybe when high school staff has a, a lot of dishes or extra work to do. Please come as soon as you're finished with your duties. Uh, you don't leave your don't leave your work undone, but come as soon as you can. Um, and so evening chapel required by all. With regards to food and meal times. Uh, number one, do not share water bottles or beverages or anything that's going to also be sharing germs. Um, and there are uh, water bottles for sale and pops in that we encourage our campers to buy. Um, the water fountain has been converted to a bottle filling station as well as one at the pavilion. So you can encourage them to keep their water bottles full there. Um, with regard to food and meal times, um, your example is very important. Uh, your attitude about the food is important. And so we, we, uh, we adapt this slogan, the food is always good at Camp Gilead as a general attitude. And that's, that's true. Stephanie does a wonderful job. Um, with regards to personally, please don't ask for a special diet except for health reasons. Um, and as you're going through the line, if there's a, a food item that you don't like, just say, uh, no thank you, I don't care for that, uh, without further comment, and encourage your, your campers to do the same. They hear the menu uh, before they go in so they can be thinking about it. And if they don't like a particular item, they can just say, no thank you, and encourage them to do that. Uh, during the mealtime, counselors should be seated with the cabin. Um, you are the control factor at the table, uh, as you are throughout the day, obviously, but at the table especially. Uh, maintain a friendly atmosphere and make sure the campers get to know each other. Mealtimes around the table is a good time to uh, build the team as, as uh, further. Encourage good table manners. Uh, highlight that one, and good table manners. Now, we're not going to change their uh, regular routine probably in five days, but um, Things like uh, challenging uh, each other to eat the food scraps or things like that or drinking more milk than you should should never occur in the dining hall or any place on the camp. Uh, ensure each camper has an adequate meal. This can be a little bit tough uh, because sometimes you have a picky eater. And I don't get too excited about this uh, unless a camper is not eating for several days. That could be a problem, but uh, they may only like the chicken nuggets and the dessert. Well, for five days, they could probably su survive on chicken nuggets and dessert, and I'm not going to get too worried about that. So, but make sure that every camper is eating a little bit, not just Snickers bars and, and Mountain Dew from Pops In. And obviously, number one, keeps going on. Set the example. Set a good example at the tables and uh, be there for your kids. Don't, uh, don't find yourself wandering around the dining hall uh, socializing with the other staff members uh, to the neglect of your table. Um, you're not allowed to store food, personal food, in the uh, dining hall or the kitchen. Um, health department does not allow that, and so uh, you just need to uh, figure out what to eat based on our menu. On the weekends, we don't formally serve meals, but there are special leftover sections that the kitchen staff will set aside. If you're here for the weekend, um, you're uh, welcome to eat from those uh, trays and, and things that are designated for leftovers. Uh, do not open anything um, that isn't already designated that. Um, there's a good chance that that's part of next, the next week's menu. Laundry. Um, laundry can be a little bit of a challenge. The girls do have the laundry room available during the week right next to the restroom. 
um, but that is uh, not available because of the proximity to the uh, girls dorm for uh, you guys. Um, you're going to have to make sure you have enough clothes to survive the week and there is a laundromat uh, at the Carnation storage uh, on the Incarnation. They also have Wi-Fi there, so if you uh, need to just do some laundry, that's a, a good place to do, and you can take your laptop or your device and, and go hang out there. Uh, they are coin-operated, so you'll have to, uh, to have, I believe, quarters to operate those machines. Um, we do not have laundry available for campers. Now, there may be an emergency in your cabin, I won't go into specifics, but I think you can imagine that. And if that's the case, uh, contact the program staff and we will uh, work out a solution to that problem. Um, but uh, as you get into the older age teen camps, there may be occasion where a camper says, oh no, I <clears throat> got my special shorts or some item dirty early in the week and I was planning to wear that to the dress up and now they're all grass stained. Could you, could you wash those for me? Um, the answer is no, we don't have laundry service. I'm sorry, you'll have to pick a different uh, item to wear. With regard to leaving the camp, uh, any camper or staff member who needs to leave the grounds for any reason, uh, things like weddings, uh, athlete, athletic events, a lot of our campers have athletic events during the week, medical appointments, and any emergency uh, needs to secure uh, permission from me in advance. Uh, as a staff member, uh, if you have some, inter uh, some items like that, hopefully you've already talked with Kimberly about that. Um, if you have not, you need to do that as soon as possible. But with regard especially to your campers, they need to check out at the office if they're leaving even for an hour or maybe leaving early, they need to check out at the camp office with myself or and many times it's Sarah is there as well to uh, check out. Um, leaving the campground for any reason other than your time off is not permitted uh, unless you have special permission. Um, we need you here supervising your young people and, and so uh, please remember that. Lost and found. Um, we will have a lot of lost and found. I, it never f ceases to amaze me the amount of clothes and shoes and everything that get left. Um, clothing and other lost and found items should be brought to the offices and we'll put them on display uh, on the front rail of Kimberly's office and as well as sometimes the, with regard to day camp, we put them on the fence by the day camp parking. Uh, and so uh, we will, hopefully the parents will see those and, and recognize their son or daughters. And then on Saturday, we will have them out as well on a table. And so uh, a couple of items, uh, or a couple of clarifications. Lost and found items should not be claimed by you or staff member during the summer. You may see an item like a really neat towel or something like that, but those stay in the lost and found because we do have parents who claim those after summer when they realize their son or daughter left them here. If you find a lost and found item of value, um, watch, ring, glasses, things like that, please bring them to to my office or, or to, and uh, and We'll keep those there in the drawer. During the Saturday morning cleanup, bring all your unclaimed items. We'll, we'll direct you to clean off the handrails and the clotheslines and everything. And all, all comes down to the office area there to the table so that uh, when the parents do arrive, we push them to those tables and have them uh, look through those in hopes that again, we will have less lost and found at the end of the day. So make sure you do that when you're, when you're cleaning in front of your cabins on Saturday. And for you ladies, it's both the front rail as well as the back rail and the clothes line. All of that needs to come off. There should never be any items left uh, when we go to our closing chapel. They should all be uh, on the lost and found table. If you uh, would like to receive good old postal mail, that kind that comes in an envelope with a stamp on it or a package, um, the camp address is on the website, 30919 Northeast Carnation Farm Road, Carnation, Washington, 98014. And uh, so give that to uh, 
Give that to your friends, family. And uh, when you uh, have mail, if it's a letter that'll fit in your mailbox in the office, that's where it'll be. If it's a package larger than that, the program staff will put a, put a little label on it that says you have mail. And then you can look around for your package and it will be in the office. We don't, uh, we don't deliver packages at mail call for staff. We have an abundance of those for campers and that's a great thing. Um, and so uh, if you have a pop package, it will be in Kimberly's program office. With regard to personal conduct, um, we already talked about the attitude, servant type attitude, uh, concern for pleasing Christ, realization that camp here is for the campers. Everything we do is to help them uh, not only have a great time, but to uh, learn that walking with Jesus is a great thing. And our goal is always to move them uh, a step or two or five further in their in their relationship with him and for many uh, they may not even know much about the Lord and so that's that's a, a, a fruitful time but with regard to personal conduct of us um, we require abs abstention from al alcoholic beverages uh, recreational drug use including marijuana um, and any behavior that would not be honoring to the Lord and could cause another to stumble in their walk with him or to him um, we ask that you not attend movies during the summer. Um, set those aside uh, so that uh, our minds are, are clean. And so I like to say your personal conduct doesn't change from what we do here at camp uh, on the weekends as well. Uh, that, that should be the same. Uh, let's not take off our camp staff shirt on Saturday morning and go home and act differently. Let's, let's uh, act like Christ the whole time. Pops in. Um, you're expected to pay for the items when they're taken. We don't have a credit card or a credit system. Um, start a weekly account with your campers. They will have money in an account already. And so uh, you start one too. That way you don't have to have to run get your money. And that makes it easier for the, uh, the pops in uh, people as well. We do have a uh, discounted price for the non-food items for staff members. So if you want to, uh, to buy a sweatshirt or another non-food item, uh, talk with the person running pops in and they can tell you what the staff price is. We don't make a big deal of that as you can imagine. The campers are going to wonder why you can get that at a discount. So uh, keep that between you and the pops in person. With regard to pranks, uh, all campers are to be treated with respect. That goes beyond pranks uh, tr throughout the week. But uh, in importantly, no staff member should make fun of or torment or pull pranks on campers uh, for fun or for any other reason. Um, at the same time, we may be the victim uh, of some jokes or pranks. And uh, if they're harmless, we, we laugh and say, ah, you got me. Um, and then I usually say, but it won't happen again, right? Um, we don't want destructive or distracting things to happen. Uh, and so, uh, while we may have to be gracious in accepting a prank, um, we're not pranking. And, and importantly, we're not pranking each other as staff as well, whether during camp or, or our times off. Um, there's not much that can ruin uh, staff relationships than, to, than, a, than a prank that continues to build and build and build and pretty soon we don't have the unity we should have. So we need to be the example. We don't prank, we don't allow our campers to prank. Um, your job as a camp counselor, especially, or a day camp leader, should you see something about to happen, is to say, um, no, those are not what we do at Camp Gilead. The rule of three, this is an important one, we always keep three people in our group, and that protects ourselves and our campers. Um, so if there's a situation where uh, a camper and you need to go somewhere to retrieve an item or whatever, we take a third person, all right? That might be another camper, uh, might be another adult, whoever's available, but always have three in your group. We don't, we don't do one-on-one -on -one and we don't uh, try not to use the term one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you want to talk with a camper, uh, we, call, we call it a confab and do that in a public area on a bench over here across from the chapel, um, under the apple tree, someplace where you're in a public public view area. Don't be one-on-one -on -one, uh, in private areas and always remember the rule of three. There may be times where 
uh, one of the other staff members or, or myself uh, needs to go with a camper to the boys dorm so and so I may say hey and name you would you go for a ride with me that usually means I'm I'm obeying the rule of three and I'm not going to explain that to you I'm just going to say hey go for a walk with me or go for a ride with me on the on the golf cart we need to go to the boys dorm and that's that's why I'm doing that so don't be surprised if I happen to ask you to accompany me on something and, and you ladies do the same thing um, with regard to salary, the, the paid uh, year full summer staff will be on our payroll system and, and we'll get checks every other week and we run those through the ADP and so that your taxes and everything are taken out appropriately and then you'll get a, a W-2 at the end of the, uh, uh, end of the season, uh, end of the year actually. We will have you fill out W-4s when uh, the first week of camp so that I can enter those appropriately. Uh, some of you are going to be here for uh, just a week or two and in those cases I will hand write a check and it will be up to you if you decide to uh, declare those as income. Curfews, staff curfews on weekdays during camp. Uh, all staff go to the cabins when the campers go to the cabins. Um, and so if you're a support staff, uh, maybe you live in the upper portable or you live in the lodge, that's where you should be when, when we send everybody to the cabins, you make your way there too. And then uh, lights out at the time. If you're on high school staff, your leaders will give you a lights out time. It may be a little bit later than the campers if we're in the younger kids, or maybe the same time. Um, but go to your cabin or your living area when the campers do. And obviously for camp counselors, you should be in your cabin as well. On weekends, uh, our curfew is midnight. So you need to be, if you're staying on camp, you need to be back to camp at midnight and you need to be in your own cabin at 12.05, uh, not roaming around. And so uh, I think that's all on that. Staff dating. Um, Camp is a great place to potentially meet the person the Lord has for your life. We don't encourage it, but in appropriate setting, we uh, are aware that it could happen. So we have some guidelines that way. And we like to define staff dating this way. Spending more than two minutes exclusively with one person. Um, this, uh, we like to say during the highly romantic days of summer camp, this may be an issue. And you just need to be aware of that. Um, our goal is to make it such that the campers are not focusing on a potential relationship or they're, in, they're, they're, they're uh, thinking there's a relationship. And so if we spend more than two minutes with a person of the opposite gender, they, they start to get distracted from the program. And so be careful of that. A couple of things, absolutely no flirting or dating between the high school staff and the college staff. Um, there's a very distinct line there. Um, the program staff, uh, the full-time staff, we, uh, we watch for this and, and we don't want that distraction and so please don't make it such that we have to pull you aside and say, hey, need to, need to get, get your act together here. Um, Failure to abide will be cause for dismissal. I, I don't want it to come to that. It shouldn't come to that if we're here for the right reason. Um, college staff relationships are we approve of if they're done in the matter uh, that's wholesome and becoming of a Christian testimony. Um, as I said before, the general guides to conduct yourself in a way that the campers would not be aware of any relationship and it wouldn't draw attention from them. Um, and so. Uh, kind of limits you really to those weekend times. High school staff are not to date. It's not allowed. Um, you may have a significant other uh, that's not on staff this summer. Uh, and so obviously that limits your relationship to a weekends only. A uh, Couple other guidelines, our, our male staff are not to contact female campers. Our female staff are not to contact uh, the guys campers. And so keep that, keep that boundary of staff and camper. That is a definite boundary as well. Public display of affection between unmarried staff is not appropriate. Um, we always talk about a one-arm safe hug. That's, that's appropriate. Um, and so uh, we may talk about that later in the staff training as well.
Physical contact of any kind should be of the nature that's above reproach, uh, regardless of the relationship. And so uh, hopefully that's a, a good enough uh, definition of what we expect with regard to relationships. Swimming, uh, we swim at the pool only during the designated times and when there's a lifeguard present. Um, so during the week, you're, you just will look at your schedule and know when you're swimming. Um, weekends, if we ever get a summer, uh, weather-wise, we may want to swim on the weekends and, and you can request the pool be opened if there's at least three of you. And uh, you could talk to myself or Kimberly or Josh, um, any of the other lifeguards that may have a key uh, to open the pool uh, on a weekend basis and then you'll be required to cover it back up uh, when you're done swimming, but uh, need to have at least three of you. Time off. Uh, you'll be free to leave the camp on Saturday morning uh, after the cleaning and uh, staff meetings completed. The campers have all departed and then you'll be back Sunday night at 6.30 for the, sun for the Sunday evening staff service. So keep in mind during that time, um, well we'll talk about that, where you're required to attend church on Sunday morning. Um, you are expected to get rest on and, and be refreshed, ready to go for the next week of campers. Um, if you do spend a night away from camp, it needs to be with the same gender. And we already talked about this, your conduct and testimony off camp should be honoring to the Lord and in harmony with our standards. So don't change on that. And then with regard to weekends, there will be a sign out sheet on the outside of Kimberly's office. You sign out where you're going, what time it is and date, and then you sign back in so we know that you have returned. So that's a little bit to do with both time off and weekends. And then the last item has to do with visitors. Um, we do not allow visitors overnight on weekends. Um, during the day, you can have visitors on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon by permission from myself. Um, if you have an unexpected visitor show up, um, please direct them to the camp office so that A, I can badge them and B, they are going to be limited in their time here and also uh, not causing you to not be able to do your uh, duty. So recognize that and uh, point them towards the camp office. And then lastly, with regard to visitors, I encourage you that uh, parents, your parents are always welcome. Um, and so if they're able to swing in for an hour or on a weekend or whatever, um, encourage them to come by and see what you're doing. Now some of you, your parents are here all the time, so it's a little less a deal, but especially if you happen to live out of state or something like that, uh, parents are always welcome to come and see your ministry. Well, I hope this helps um, so that we're all on the same page and uh, give you an idea of what to, to expect. And thank you for uh, not just watching this, but encourage you to have a great summer. Thank you for your ministry here. Take care.